If you have a Twitter account, then you will know that this particular story that I'm about to talk to you about right now was trending worldwide on that platform, which means it got that much traction that it went and extended itself out of the origin of where the story came from, which was over in Rome, Italy. So you see this picture right here. It says Legionaries, Legionaries of Christ. And man, this story right here is loaded. But basically, it's going to talk about the exposure of more of these priests messing with these young boys. And I have talked about it so many times on my channel. And every time I talked about it, it usually ends the same way. With not one of them being prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law for the crimes that they have committed. Because this indeed is a crime that has been going on for a very long time. And you're going to figure out how long this one has been going on. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And this article that I'm reading from is coming from the Catholic News Agency. Legion of Christ says 33 of its priests sexually abuse minors. I think they're lying already because I truly believe it's way higher than 33. Rome, Italy, December 22nd, 2019, 1.10 p.m. Since its founding in 1941, 33 priests of the Legionaries of Christ committed sexual abuse of minors, victimizing 175 children, according to a report of an internal commission released Saturday. I truly, like I said before, believe, highly doubt that it was only 33. I believe that it's way higher. I think it's probably in the hundreds somewhere, maybe even more. The commission did not address the issue of abuse of power and conscience, nor has it delved into the shortcomings of the actions of some superiors to analyze where they may have been a cover up, negligence or omissions. The commission is aware that this is an important pending task. The December 21st report states Marshall Maciel, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name correctly who founded the order, abused at least 60 minors. Now, this is one person. In addition, 74 of the order's seminarians abused minors. Of these, 14 went on to be ordained. Three of those 14 were ordained after 2005, and the superiors admitted them to ordination without knowledge of the facts. The investigation was taken with a view to the Legion's general chapter, which will begin on January 20th, 2020. Citing the secrecy of abuse, the report also notes that there are likely more abuse cases than are reported here in that statistics will have to be updated periodically. Now, that part I agree with, and I think anybody else with a sound mind would agree to. It's way higher than what they're claiming. The report does not name the priests who abused the minors. That's not surprising. Citing differences in national legislation and the ethical considerations at play, i.e. they don't want to they're giving them protection. Though the order's U.S. province has published its own list of offending priests. The vast majority of the victims were boys between the ages of 11 and 16. The 33 priests who abused minors constitute 2.44% of the order's priests. Of those 33, six have died. Eight have left the priesthood and one has left the legionaries and 18 remain in the congregation. Now, hear about, like that's, now you heard that. They said that they, that 18 are still active. That's probably why they're not giving out the names. Of those 18, 14 have no public priestly ministry, while four have a restricted ministry that excludes pastoral work with minors, such as schools and youth groups. Those four also have a personal safety plan, according to the report. 14 legion priests who committed abuse of minors were themselves victim of the abuse in the order. So it, was, it looks like it's just a cycle of BS. It is worth noting that 111 of the victims were either victims of Father Maciel or were victims of his victims or a victim of one of his victims. This represents 63.43% of the 175 victims in priests in the congregation. The minor seminaries of the congregation where over 10,000 students resided were the most vulnerable environment for sexual abuse in previous decades. This is due, first of all, to the associated risk of boarding school. In addition, various other factors converge, such as the little time that students spent with their families at that time, the insufficient formation 
and foresight, I'm sorry, oversight of young directors' deficiencies in effective sexual formation and a and a perception that overemphasized discipline. Aside from Father Maciel's victims, 65 minors were abused at the Legion's minor seminaries. No known sexual abuse in a minor seminary of the Legion has taken place since 2012, and its minor seminaries underwent reform in 2015. In the order school, 33 minors were victimized, three in parishes and one in youth ministry. We deplore and condemn the abuses committed in our history, as well as those institutional and personal practices that may have favored and encouraged any form of abuse or re-victimization. We acknowledge with honesty and shame the reality of the crimes of sexual abuse of minors in the Legion's history, sincerely desiring a continued personal and institutional conversion. The Legion of Christ was long the subject of critical reports and rumors before it was rocked by Vatican acknowledgement that its charismatic founder lived a double life, sexually abused seminarians and fathered children. In 2006, the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith removed Maciel from the public ministry and ordered him to spend the rest of his life in prayer and penance. Now, look at that. That's that's the consequence. Spend a life in prayer and penance. Some punishment. The congregation decided not to subject him to a canonical. I probably pronounced that all wrong. It's spelled C-A-N-O-N-I-C-A-L process because of his advanced age. I'm guessing that's like one of the highest form of punishments that they gave him. So that prayer and penance was nothing more than a slap on the wrist. From that point, Pope Benedict carried on a process of reform for the Legion of Christ, a process continued under Pope Francis. And that part right there about the prayer and penance doesn't surprise me because I remember doing a story, if it wasn't last year, maybe a couple years ago, where it was some priest over here, somewhere in the Northeast somewhere, who was doing something like this to these young boys. And what they decided to do was send them to some kind of rehab or something or other in Canada somewhere where they were supposed to, I guess, flesh out their quote unquote demons and then send them right back over here into the States and let them continue in the ministry. It was almost like they sent them to a rehab clinic or some sort of like that. And then they didn't even stay there that long. I think they only stayed there for like a month or two. And then came back. I'm like, you can't flesh out that kind of behavior, especially when it's been going on for so long. But as you can see right here, they don't give them any real type of punishment. And they are some of the biggest predators on the planet. It's almost like they practically invented it. If you want to talk about some people who have predatory behavior, look no further than that Catholic church. And they always mess with little boys all the time rarely do you ever hear them messing with girls not saying that they should because that will be still messed up because they're minors but they're messing with boys but this also and i truly believe this to be true as well the fact that many of them or damn near all of them can't have any type of companionship with um you know a grown person because they have to swear their life, like, you know, to be celibate, it messes with them. So what they'll do is they'll take it out on a minor, someone whose mind is still developing, who is impressionable because they can't get it anywhere else. That's just like that story I did with those two nuns who went over and did that missionary in Africa and they got pregnant because they, they, first off, they knew that was against their order. And two, they couldn't get it any other way. But at the same time, well, we don't know what the ages of these individuals they went over there to get pregnant by, but let's hypothetically say that they're grown. At least they didn't mess with no kids. But we've heard story after story after story for year after year after year of these priests inappropriately messing with these kids. And what's even more upsetting is that these families keep taking their kids back to these places to what they think is supposed to be a haven, but it really is not. They are some sick individuals. 
But like I said before, that 33 number, I highly doubt it's only 33. I extremely doubt it's 33. It's definitely way more than that. But they're only saying 33 to soften the blow. And that whole sentencing them to prayer and penance, that's that's weak. That is a weak sentence. But because they're part of the church, they don't want to put them in jail. Like, when's the last time you heard of a Catholic priest who's done something like this actually go to jail for their crime? They don't even call it a crime, even though that's what it is. And the thing is, you can put this out there as much as you want, but they're not going to do anything to them. They're going to continue to do it because they've had a long history. You heard when it, they they dated this back to 1941. We're talking a few generations ago when they're dating this back to, even though I believe it's dated back even further than that. I believe it started back in the exception in the inception of the Catholic Church. But every time you hear these type of stories, it usually always comes out of that region, out of that zone, all the time. Not saying it doesn't come anywhere else from any other religious, I guess you can say, practice. But out of that Catholicism, it always comes from that. And it doesn't surprise me either when you think of the Roman Catholic Church. If you look at their history, as far as sexual deviancy... It lines right up. So they're playing right through they're They're playing right through their ancestors. What they were founded on initially is what they're still doing to this day, which is probably why they turn a blind eye to it. I wouldn't be surprised if they came out and said this is a part of our religion. But you also see that they didn't expose them either. They didn't get they didn't give any they didn't get not one name away. Of any priest except for that one. But the other ones, they don't mention them, and some of them still work there. So you'll never know which one it is. That on that alone, nobody should ever go back to that place. If you do, you just asking for it. Because they won't stop. They're going to continue to do what it is that they are they're doing right now. They cannot help themselves. It's a habit that cannot be broken. And if it could be broken, they refuse to break it because they're they're used to it. Like this is their lifestyle. And to think some will consider this to be normal behavior, the way that they're treating it with the lack of consequence, you would think that it is. But, yeah, they are some sick individuals. And, yeah, that definitely goes on over here, too. But. I don't think it's been blown up quite like it is now, especially with this story that I just brought to you. But they'll stay in the news, but they'll continue to always get away with it at the same time because of who it is. Now, let this happen with a black church. Let this happen with a Baptist church or an AME church. Not only would this have blown up in the news, but we would have known the name of the people involved. We would have known all the victims. And they would have got sent to jail. They would not have been sent to no rehab. They would not have been sentenced to no prayer and penance for life. They're going to jail like they should and like they should. But they won't because they feel it's too harsh for them. They, you saw they gave that man that prayer and penance thing because they said he was up in age. They love to use that up in age thing when it comes to a palm colored male. But guess who else is up in age? Bill Cosby. And guess where he's at? In jail. And for what? Hearsay. But these individuals right here, that is no hearsay. That is actually what happened. But they got protection and they got no jail time. Again, I will ask you, when's the last time you heard of a Catholic priest going to jail for child molestation or being a child predator? They don't even call it that. They don't even call it being a child molester. Or a sex offender. They don't even label it that. They don't even get the labels. I'm done. Y'all let me know what you think.